The Uvalde police chief finally breaking his silence, but still not revealing answers. Families want to know what he had to say coming up. Plus, two men stabbed at a San Antonio bar, one of them not making it home alive. What officials say happened. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. A revealing and damning report raises more questions about the police response to the deadly shooting in Uvalde. An article published in the New York Times says the Uvalde Consolidated ISD Police Chief Pete Arredondo knew that there were people still alive in the classrooms at Robb Elementary. It says he still waited more than an hour to send armed officers to enter the room where he knew the shooter was holed up. The article comes more than two weeks after the shooting at Robb Elementary, where details of the police response have continued to change. We're also learning that state lawmakers received an update from the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety yesterday. State investigators believe that delay comes down to protecting police. That's according to an official who was briefed in yesterday's closed door presentation in Austin. They then spoke to ABC News. They were told uh, different information that Arredondo was waiting for protective gear to arrive. One transcript reportedly quotes Arredondo saying, quote, people are going to ask why we're taking so long. And according to the New York Times timeline, the first 911 call from Robb Elementary came at a certain hour. According to the New York Times timeline, the first 911 call from Robb Elementary came in at 1130 a.m. A teacher reported seeing the suspect near the school with the gun. DPS says he fired several shots at the building two minutes later and entered a pair of adjoined classrooms at 11.33 a.m. Police officers entered the school at 11.35. Two officers who approached the door to the classroom were grazed by bullets. The New York Times article cites several documents from law enforcement and video footage. The footage reportedly shows Arredondo first discusses breaching the classrooms almost an hour into the shooting, around 12.21 p.m., but a transcript says he wanted to find the keys for the door. The Times reports several officers voiced concerns about waiting to go in as 911 calls continued to come in. Several calls were made from the classrooms the shooter entered. The Times says Uvalde CISD police officer got a call from his wife saying she had been shot. We know one of the victims, Eva Morellas, was married to a district police officer. A Border Patrol tactical unit finally breached the classroom door at 12.50, one hour and 17 minutes after the first shots were fired at the school. Arredondo broke his silence yesterday in a new interview with the Texas Tribune. He defended his actions and says his department's efforts to clear the other classroom saved lives. We have made our own requests to interview Arredondo, but so far he has declined. Now, the decision to wait for protective gear goes against active shooter training for most police departments. A Uvalde CISD police officer and supervisor taught in active shooter training just two months before the school shooting. Training records obtained by the Defenders show participants were encouraged to use, quote, immediate decisive action. If you would like to read the full story on this, the entire article is on KSAT.com. All you need to do is look for the story on our homepage. Now, we're continuing our coverage of the tragedy in Uvalde this morning. We want to share with you that funeral services will be held today for Eva Mireles, one of the teachers who was gunned down on May 24th. We're told that Eva was outgoing. She loved CrossFit, singing, karaoke, and planning events for her family. Her friends say that she would light up the room just with her smile and her personality. Her service takes place, or rather took place, just a few hours ago at 10 o'clock this morning. Also today, visitation services are being held for Alexandra Rubio. Family and friends say Lexi was an athletic and compassionate, and she wanted to attend St. Mary's University to play softball and attend law school. Her parents testified before Congress this week. Her funeral is set for tomorrow. Back here at home, San Antonio police say two men walking away from a good time at a northwest side bar found themselves in an especially bad way. They say someone attacked the men, stabbing and killing one of them. It happened last call after last call at the bar in a parking lot near Loop 1604 and Chase Hill Boulevard. As Katrina Weber reports, the violence came at the end of what everyone says had been a peaceful night.
Not far from the bright lights of D.O. Sports Bar and Grill, someone attacked in a dark section of the parking lot. San Antonio police say one victim was knocked unconscious while another was stabbed around two this morning. They say both men had left the bar only moments before. When we looked out, he was already laying on the ground. Cheryl Kellerman manages that business, which had just closed for the night. She says after realizing something was wrong, one of her bouncers called out for help. Our DJ went out and performed CPR. One of our bartenders had a CPR kit and went out and performed CPR. Still, the man who was stabbed died. Police believe the two victims may have been set up. They say two women in the parking lot called them over, then two other men ambushed them. By all accounts, it was a peaceful night inside this bar. Even police say they found no evidence of anything inside leading to the attack that happened outside. I pulled the bouncer immediately and asked him, did they raise their voice? Were they arguing? Nothing. Yeah, it had nothing to do with the bar. All that police know about the attackers right now is they left in a white Dodge truck. They plan to look at surveillance video from the bar and other businesses to learn more. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio firefighters had a busy time on their hands. There was a blaze here on the city's west side this morning. It happened in the 600 block of Arbor Place. That's near Colorado Street. Fire investigators say the house was vacant. No word yet on exactly what caused this fire. Other stories we are following this afternoon. A man is shot in the chest and another man is on the run from police. That shooting happening on the city's southwest side. This all happened just before 8 last night off Gwendolyn near Old Pearsall Road. San Antonio police say a 40-year-old man went to a neighbor's home where he was shot during an argument by a 20-year-old man. At last check, the victim was in critical condition. SAPD says the suspect was last seen in a white Honda. Police are talking with at least five witnesses, and officers believe the suspect is still armed. This is an ongoing investigation. Now to an update on a story we brought you earlier this week. A bicyclist hit and killed with a Jeep on Petrenko Road has now been identified. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office says he is 34-year-old Andrew Eroke. The crash happened just outside of Loop 1604 on Petrenko Road near Sundance Crest. Sheriff's deputies say the woman driving the Jeep told them she just didn't see the cyclist at first, but when she'd swerved, uh, she could not avoid him. He was hit. Investigators are calling that crash an accident. And after today, the city of San Antonio will no longer accept applications for its rental, mortgage, and utility assistance. The program helps people with financial hardships during the pandemic, but that hardship does not have to be related to COVID. Those who qualify based on income can receive one-time assistance. Applications can be submitted through the city's website. The application deadline is 11.59 p.m. tonight. We are paying for more, or rather we're paying more for less. It's a problem that we have not seen in the last 40 years. That may come as no surprise to those who gassed up their car or went to the grocery store lately. According to the Consumer Price Index, it's, it is reporting that the nation's inflation rate has risen 8.6% in the last 12-month period ending last month. Ahead in our next half hour, COVID cases on the rise yet again. One Texas city reporting a surge in cases, but is this round as bad as the others? We'll explain. And Spurs great Tony Parker is showing off his impressive superheroes and villains collection. Find out where you can check it out. But first, we want to introduce you to a local family who has a goal to visit 63 national parks in the U.S. The reason why, after the break. Pretty bumpy morning for folks near the Midland area. They had an earthquake. The Geological Survey reporting a 3.4 magnitude earthquake hit just north of Stanton around 2.30 this morning. No reports of injuries or damage so far. That quake followed by a 2.6 magnitude aftershock. To visit all 63 U.S. national parks, that's the goal for one San Antonio family. The Castillo family has been hiking and exploring parks all across the country with their kids. And that is a challenge that our youngest child is just one year old. The family tells our Tiffany Huertas how this journey has impacted their life and the benefits Mother Nature has to offer. Started in Colorado, we went to Pikes Peak, we did Manitou Incline, 
um, and then we hit a rocky, uh, rocky Mountain National Park. The Castillo family started visiting national parks during the COVID-19 pandemic. Really took the stress that was that we were feeling at home. With every park came a different experience. We were together, um, and so that became like, oh, we want to do more. We want to see more. Okay, so what's the next place? The family, including one-year-old Journey, has visited 38 national parks already. Valerie and Eric Castillo say their daughter lights up every time she visits a new park. I think it's brought us closer together, um, you know, with just how fast life is um, nowadays um, with work and kids and everything else going on. Uh, it just, it's hard to actually bond as a family. I feel like when we're in those remote locations at national parks, um, you know, with no cell phone servers, no Wi-Fi, and you're just there in the nature. The family says not only are they staying active, but learning along the way. Every park has its own story. The family is saving and planning for their next trip. For others thinking of taking this journey. Do some research, Come on, run. Um, check out blogs, watch YouTube videos, um, and don't be afraid, you know, just get out there and go. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Those are memories that are going to last forever. Definitely. Remember that time mom and dad <laughs> took us across the world? I would world? wait till the temperatures drop, though. It's a little oh, too hot. Oh, right, oh right. At least don't go hiking today or this <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, get out uh, get out early uh, in the day if, if you want to do some hiking or act outdoor activities because, as we well know, uh, it is very hot and it's going to stay that way through the weekend. In fact, we actually bring your high temperatures up a few degrees both Saturday and Sunday. I've got your weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. First, the aquifer today is down nearly one foot to 637.2. And in the pollen count, here's a little bit of good news. No issues. Molds and grass are both low today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The stock market way down over 800 points. The temperature right. way, way up. up. <laughs> and it's going to stay that way. Ideally, we would flip flop those things, but uh, that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, the heat is still on. It is going to be a very, very hot weekend. So please, if you've got outdoor plans, mm. Stay hydrated and, and keep that sunscreen close. Uh, here's a look at yesterday's high temperatures. Didn't quite get to 100 at the airport, but we did get to 99, and I guarantee you, you probably didn't notice the difference unless you were watching the temperatures really closely. Did get up to 100 in Hondo, also 100 in Gonzales yesterday, 103 the high in Pleasanton. Here's what we're looking at this afternoon. I do expect around San Antonio we will get above 100 degrees today for a high around 102. Look for a high around 104 in Pleasanton, 105 Catula. A few upper 90s, but still very close to triple digits across the hill country. Plenty of sun this afternoon. South winds around 5 to 15 miles per hour. And we warm things up even more over the weekend. So here's what we're looking at the next few days. Today, Saturday, Sunday, our high temperatures jump up to 104 this weekend. And with that slight bump up in the air temperature, we're looking at higher heat index readings or feels like temperatures over the weekend. And we when we get these heat indices between about 105 approaching 110, that's when it starts to get a little bit dangerous. And if you're outside doing strenuous activity and you're not properly hydrated, not taking frequent breaks, this heat can sneak up on you. So some dangerous heat in place for the next few days as our heat indices, that pink line here, as those numbers stay between 105 and 110. As a result of these numbers, a heat advisory is in place for all the counties in orange today from 1 to 9 p.m. Would not be surprised if we see a heat advisory tomorrow and then again Sunday even into early next week. So you'll continue to see these alerts pop up on your phone, um, maybe on your smart devices at home and also uh, on our weather page on KSAT.com if you're checking out the forecast there. So you'll continue to see these heat alerts likely over the next couple of days. Currently, we've got a few puffy cumulus clouds out there, really not big enough to provide a whole lot of shade, even if you can catch yourself under one of these little clouds. 90 now at the airport and no wind. We will have a light breeze here and there today, a little more breezy this evening towards sunset, but for now, 
Calm winds and our heat index is already up to 95. It's 91 Castroville, 96 Divine, still mid 80s around Canyon Lake and 86 at Bernie Stage. Morning clouds are quickly going away. We've got some spotty cumulus clouds across the area, but that will give way generally to abundant sunshine this afternoon. It's also really just sunny and hot across Texas, with the exception of far east Texas. There's a big complex of severe thunderstorms dropping southeast across Louisiana and parts of Mississippi. That unfortunately will not be moving into Texas, definitely not heading our direction. Uh, the movement of these storms is actually being steered by the heat high, which is keeping us really hot. The winds around this area of upper level high pressure are clockwise, so that's pushing all this thunderstorm activity down to the south, not allowing it to move into Texas. And the heat high hangs very close this weekend. It really moves right over top of us Saturday, Sunday, so that's why we bring your high temperatures up a few degrees over the next couple of days. Things start to change a little bit next week. Not going to be total relief, but we'll get that heat high to plant itself over the eastern U.S. Again, the winds around that area of high pressure clockwise. That's going to help to bring in a few little subtle uh, rain making disturbances on the southern edge of this heat high and also just a little bit more moisture for us to work with. And that should lend itself to some very, very low chances of some stray showers as we get into the back half of next week. Again, not total relief and it's still going to be plenty warm out there, but we'll see just a slight change that should allow for some more moisture around and potentially a few stray showers, but that really won't be until the middle of next week. Until then, more numbers like this in your KSAT 12 hour forecast. High temperature around San Antonio 102 sunny skies. South winds about 5 to 15 miles per hour. As I mentioned, a little bit more of a breeze after the sun goes down, but still very warm tonight. 91 at 9 p.m. 88 at 10 o'clock. So it will be very hot this weekend. Uh, please continue to take care of yourself. Stay hydrated and keep that sunscreen handy if you'll be spending a lot of time outside, guys. Thank you. And I think we need to also mention do not walk your dogs at the heat of the day. Right. This weekend or today. Watch not those good. paws. Watch the paws. Yes. Spurs great Tony Parker, a superhero on the court. And now he's showing off his private collection of heroes, supervillains, and so forth to the public. We're going to tell you about his exhibit. NBA, NBA Finals continue. RJ Marquez will let you uh, know if one of the best players in the series will have to miss tonight's game. That's ahead in just a bit. Welcome back. Game four of the NBA Finals tonight right here on KSAT 12. And many Golden State players taking practice off yesterday to rest and recover from what's been a very physical series. The Warriors lost game three of the NBA Finals and trailed the Celtics two games to one. Check this out here. Steph Curry got hurt late in the fourth quarter of game three when Al Horford rolled onto his left leg while they were diving for a loose ball. But Steph says that he's going to play tonight despite that injury. The Celtics were led by Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. They combined for 53 points in that win. Former Spurs player Derek White added seven points in that victory. So again, game four tonight from Boston tips off at 8 o'clock p.m. And you could see that and watch it right here on KSAT 12. And here's a guy who knows a thing or two about playing in the NBA Finals. That would be four-time champ and Spurs great Tony Parker. TP9 is, of course, now retired, but he's a big, big comic book fan. He's now lending his private collection of life-size superhero statues to the San Antonio Museum of Art. So this exhibit is called Tony Parker's Heroes and Villains, and it features more than 40 pieces. The exhibit is now open and runs through September 4th. He's got Iron Man, Wonder Woman, and Batman, just to name a few, but we had to ask Tony if he was more of a DC or Marvel guy? Well, I'm more a Marvel guy, that's for sure. Uh, my favorite is Iron Man. Uh, that's my favorite character. Uh, my favorite statue here is the big Hulkbuster because of the story behind it, because it took 10 of us to, to carry everything and, and to assemble it. Yeah, that statue is impressive. So Parker told us he's been collecting these life-size statues for about 10 years. It started as a birthday gift, and they now surround his personal court at home. So very impressive collection there. 
Okay, the tragedy in Uvalde, of course, affecting everyone here in South Texas, and now the San Antonio missions are stepping up to help out those victims just a bit. The missions announced they were well wear these jerseys right here, the Uvalde High School baseball jerseys during their game on Thursday, June 16th. Those jerseys will be auctioned off with proceeds going to the Robb Elementary School Memorial Fund. The jersey design, as you can see right there, is a replica of the ones worn by the Uvalde Coyotes High School baseball team, and fans in attendance at Wolf Stadium on June 16th will be able to bid on the game worn jerseys during the game. The auction ends 15 minutes after the final out. So we see guys a lot of people doing different things to step up for the Uvalde community, including their seven on seven football team, which is competing also. And those kids are playing for the memories, of course, of those students and teachers lives lost. I love to hear that everyone's stepping in to, mm -hmm. to really help and support this community. Absolutely. In a very creative way of doing it. Hats off to the missions. And coronavirus cases rising in parts of Texas, including here in San Antonio. So how much longer until we can say COVID is like any other sickness? A local professor has some of those answers. And later on, we're going to take you to Washington and give you the latest on the investigation into the January 6th Capitol attack. Inflation numbers are out and they are ugly. Prices are growing at the fastest pace in 40 years. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz looks at how food, gas and everything else is up, plus how it's affecting consumers and what it means for the economy in the near future. Taking a look at the COVID numbers here at home as of yesterday afternoon, in the last seven days, the average is at 561 cases. This week, there have been two new deaths. A total of 110 people are in the hospital with the virus. 29 of those are in the ICU. Now, 17 are on ventilators. This is an increase from what we reported over the weekend. And of course, we will continue to monitor these numbers closely. San Antonio, not only the only place seeing a slight increase in COVID numbers, our neighbors over in Houston reporting more infections as well. Wastewater testing there shows cases are jumping to levels similar to the first surge back in 2020. The good news, health officials say the risk of hospitalizations and deaths is not comparable to the latest surges, and those numbers continue to remain low. So could this virus ever disappear? It's going to be with us forever. Uh, and I think we're within probably weeks to months of having it just in the background, like all the other infectious disease we always have to deal with. Vaccination rates continue to rise here in Bear County with more than 76% of the population getting the shots. The Biden administration will announce today the CDC will lift the requirement of a negative COVID test for travelers entering the United States. That's according to a senior administration official. The change will go into effect for U.S. bound air travelers at midnight Sunday, June 12th. The measure has been in place since January of last year. The travel industry, along with some scientific experts, say the policy has been out of date for months. The official said the CDC is lifting the testing after determining it was no longer necessary based on current science and data. The CDC says it will re reassess its decision in 90 days. Officials can reinstate it if, it need it if they need it and if there's concerning new variants. And there are some new vaccination news here. First, COVID-19 vaccinations for children under the age of five could start as early as the week of June 20th. But as parents wait for a final decision on vaccines for this age group, a rollout plan is already underway. Manny Gaither has more on what parents need to know. It's what many parents have been waiting for, the protection of a COVID-19 vaccine for young children. Realistically, it means we could see shots in arms of kids under five as early as the week of June 20th. FDA vaccine advisors are set to meet next week to discuss authorizing emergency use of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for children ages six months through five years and Pfizer's vaccine for children six months through four years of age. Pending those decisions, the CDC will make final recommendations about the vaccines. But before that even happens, the White House says it's planning for all scenarios. Last week, 10 million vaccine doses were made available to pre-order for children under five, millions more will be ready to go in the coming weeks. This approach allows us to seed communities with enough vaccine so that it is readily accessible and equitably distributed across the country. 
While most parents are expected to seek a vaccine from their pediatrician, a senior administration official says additional vaccine clinics and sites will be set up at easy to access locations for parents, including pharmacies, schools, children's hospitals, diaper banks, community health centers, clinics, museums, libraries, and organizations serving minority communities across the country. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Taking a look outside through live cam, let me tell you, Ursula, when I step outside of my apartment in the mornings, I'm deceived. I'm thinking it's going to be cool and fresh, <laughs> and it's the opposite. Nope. And we're talking early in the morning. Early morning. <laughs> what time are we, are we talking? Oh, I wake up at 3. And and look at you. You're so up and cheery and bright-eyed. <laughs> it's the caffeine. Bright-eyed. It's the <laughs> caffeine. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, and it's also... Uh, Sometimes a little deceiving in the morning because we have clouds around very early in the day, but we lose them pretty quickly and all the sun helps to heat us up once again. And that's what we've got ahead for the next few days. So uh, we didn't hit 100 yesterday, but so far this year we've had nine triple digit days at the airport. And even that is a little deceiving because we've had so many days with a high temperature of 98, 99. Uh, so we've gotten really close uh, a lot, especially last month. Um, here's a look at the years that we've had the most triple digit days in San Antonio. 2009 uh, is in the lead now with 59 triple digit days close behind 2011 with 57 days and in third place 2013 with 41 days and the way things are looking uh, not only are we going to add to our tally for this year but by the time summer is over we're probably uh, looking at a significant number of triple digit days around san antonio here's a look at your highs the next few days 102 today 104 saturday 104 on sunday and then we bring your highs back down to 99. It's still going to be very hot next week, uh, but it looks like we'll be able to drop out of triple digit territory with a slight weather pattern change. More on that in a bit. Uh, it's been hot for so long. It's <laughs> sometimes we forget it's not officially summer yet. The summer solstice is actually still 11 days away. It is on June. 21st, but the summertime sizzle has been with us for a while today. Look for a temperature of 98 around 2 o'clock, a high around 102 today. Even this evening, especially before the sun goes down, still going to be very hot. 98 at 7 p.m., 88 at 10 o'clock with a light southerly breeze at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. If you missed it last half hour, we'll talk more about what you can expect this weekend coming up in just a bit. I've also got your forecast for the beach if you're heading down to the coast and something else we don't really want to talk about, but we have to. That Saharan dust, it looks like it starts to arrive next week week. More on that outlook in just a bit, guys. Okay, Saharan dust, high temperatures, not great. We want to head over to Washington now where the House Select Committee shared findings from its January 6th Capitol riot. It was the first of a series of primetime sessions. The committee of seven Democrats and two selected Republicans attempted to make the case that former President Donald Trump was directly responsible for the brutal attack on the Capitol. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more from Washington. To a primetime television audience, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol, methodically laying out the results of its 11-month-long investigation. The committee arguing the deadly Capitol riot was an attempted coup and arguing former President Donald Trump was at the center of a conspiracy to overturn the 2020 election. During the hearing, playing taped testimony from those in Trump's inner circle, like former Attorney General Bill Barr and his daughter Ivanka, to make the case Trump knew he'd lost the election. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was bull. And Trump's former top aide, Jason Miller, telling the committee that a top data analyst on the campaign told Trump he'd lost the presidency. The committee's presentation also including this video showing Enrique Torrio, the leader of the Proud Boys, meeting with Stuart Rhodes, the head of another far right group, the Oath Keepers, in an underground garage the day before the Capitol attack. The new footage also showing rioters brutalizing police. And here, Capitol Police Officer Caroline Edwards struggling to hold the line against the mob. Moments later, thrown to the ground and knocked unconscious. What I saw was just a, a war scene. Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney, the committee's vice chair, not mincing words about Trump's alleged culpability in the riot or that of her Republican colleagues who continue to support him.
There will come a day when Donald Trump is gone, but your dishonor will remain. Now, Cheney claims the committee has documents proving that shortly after the January 6th Capitol attack, several Republican congressmen reached out to President Trump for pardons for their role in trying to overturn the election, something at least one Republican congressman who was named by the committee calls a lie. The January 6th committee will hold their next public hearing on Monday in Washington. I'm Jay O'Brien, ABC News. The National Weather Service confirming that a tornado touched down in Ohio. We have the latest from their report and from our local weather expert, Katie Blake. And a bit later in sports, we take you to the Diamond, where some local high schools are looking to bring home a state title. Our RJ Marquez has that in just a bit. But first, how you can get your hands on some Popeye's chicken for just 59 cents. One penny. That's how close we are to paying a gallon of gas hitting five bucks a gallon. That's the national average price. We have never seen that before. And just today, AAA reporting that prices jumped three cents to four dollars and ninety nine cents a gallon. Again, this is, these are nationwide numbers. The 31st record high in the past 32 days. And here in Bear County, not quite as bad. It's four dollars and 62 cents a gallon on average listen to this and take out your calendars this sunday take a trip back into time to 1972 popeyes is celebrating 50 years selling two pieces of its bone and chicken for just 59 cents the same price it sold it for when it opened the week-long deal starts june 12th the official anniversary and comes with a five dollar order minimum the chicken chain plans to announce more celebration deals as the months continue. You know, I was living in Louisiana when Popeye's opened in 1972. So it, was it 59 cents? I, I bet it was. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was uh, in middle school, but I, I'm sure it was. I, but I, Popeye's, great job all these years. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding, that's a good deal. Uh, outside, what's not so great of a deal, how hot it is going to be this weekend. More on your weekend forecast in just a few, but first, let's look at the pollen count if you've missed it today. Good news here, molds and grass are both low. We like to see that. We don't like to see this. The aquifer really fallen now, down almost a foot in the past 24 hours to 637.2. Stay with us, we'll be right back. The National Weather Service confirming an EF1 tornado touched down in Ohio yesterday. 90 mile per hour winds uprooting trees and tossing sheds in Gloucester Township in the Deer Park subdivision. Residents are in the process of cleaning up. Many are counting their blessings, saying the damage could have been much worse. Again, we're complaining about the heat, but at least we don't have that to That's deal right. with. True, we don't want to deal with that. We'll just take some, some measly showers. That too much to ask, Ice, A storm. Yeah. Very much needed. Just yeah. one. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Ursula kind of alluded to this earlier, but not only do I have more heat to tell you about, I also have some Saharan dust Fun. to tell you about. It is that time of year during hurricane season. The trade winds pick up large plumes of dust from the Saharan desert over in Africa, carry them across the Atlantic. And we have our first pretty sizable plume that'll be moving across the Caribbean. Well, it is moving across the Caribbean now, but we'll be inching closer to Texas next week. So this weekend, not expecting any issues, maybe a very low concentration of the dust by Sunday. But then as we get into Monday and early next week, a thicker plume will start to move into Texas. So this could become a bit more noticeable, especially in terms of things looking hazy by the time we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, and could even persist uh, through the end of next week. So just know that is on the horizon. A few reminders about this dust that we like to share every year when it starts to filter. And one thing that's important, these plumes, they will come and go over the course of the summer. And we always give you a heads up when it looks like one is heading our way. This dust can turn our skies fairly hazy, can also lead to vibrant sunsets. And, and in terms of how it would affect you. For a lot of folks, um, unless the plume is very, very dense, um, it really won't have any effect. For those that are sensitive to um, 
uh, different types of uh, respiratory conditions, so those that have asthma, COPD. Uh, you may notice it a little bit more, and there may be some allergy-like symptoms associated with these plumes of dust, especially when they're on the more dense side. So uh, again, we'll keep you updated there as it looks like a plume will move in next week. Uh, another thing that happens when these plumes of dust move across the Atlantic, it suppresses tropical cyclone development. So as a result, with these plumes moving across, uh, nothing's expected to uh, develop as far as the tropics goes uh, out in the Atlantic for the next couple of days. Speaking of tropics and the water, let me move out of the way so you can get your beach forecast. If you're heading down to the beach, maybe Port A or Corpus Christi this weekend, it's going to be plenty hot down there. Don't worry about that. Low rip current risk. That's some good news. Uh, wave heights tomorrow around three feet and up to four feet on Sunday. If you're hanging out here at home, just a whole lot of heat for you. More record heat, in fact, over the next couple of days. 104, the high temperatures, uh, what we're expecting Saturday and Sunday. And I know we're just fatigued, right? It has just been so hot uh, really since May. Take a look at this. May uh, was our hottest on record. Uh, 12 record high temperatures uh, have been reached between May and so far in June. So I know we're just fatigued with the heat and unfortunately uh, won't be breaking down for us anytime soon. Current temperatures across Texas, 93 San Angelo, 93 at Abilene, mid 80s in Dallas with a bit more cloud cover there. But again, the culprit is the heat high or a ridge of high pressure that continues to just stay really close to Texas, and it'll be with us as we get into the weekend. Now, by the middle of next week, it moves a bit farther away over to the eastern U.S., changes our upper level flow just a bit such that we'll likely get some weak rain making disturbances moving in from the Gulf and also a little bit more moisture from the Gulf, and that should lend itself to some low 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 end chances of rain and some additional cloud cover as we get into the middle and back half of next week. So a very subtle change, but anything to get that heat high away from us for just a bit. Currently 94 Gonzales and 97 in Pleasanton. It's 90 at the airport, 91 in Castroville and also 91 in Bulverde. Here's how your temperatures play out this afternoon. Look for a high around 102 in Seguin, 103 Nixon, 103 Sabinal, 99 up in comfort. Dangerous heat the next few days. Take care of yourself. Stay hydrated. Take care of our furry friends as well. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's not only the temps heating up across the area. How about some local baseball teams playing for a state title? Let's check out De Hennis taking on Nazareth for the 1A state championship. And the Cowboys find themselves in a bit of a jam at the bottom of the first. Nazareth has runners on second and third, but pitcher Ryan Hendry gets a pop up into shallow left. Looks like it might drop, but left fielder Leighton Herman hustles and makes the grab, then sees that the lead runner is off the bag. As we look at these highlights, he touches the, there in the third inning, ending that. That double play. So we're still scoreless in this game. DeHennis finally breaks through in the top of the fourth. Base is loaded. Herman draws a walk. That scores JJ Garcia. And it's 1 0 DeHennis. And no more damage done in that inning. But the bats come alive in the top of the fifth. Dalen Gonzalez with a base hit into right. Kobe Fortner scores. And it's 2 0 Cowboys right there. The inning continues this time. Rain Redden drives a base hit right up the middle. Gonzalez rounds third. And he will score part of a third run inning for the Cowboys. They lead four. 0 after 5 and Hendry keeps on dominating on the mound throughout this game pitching a 3 hit shutout striking out 6 batters including you saw right there the final out to Hennis wins the title 4 to 0 and the Cowboys can't feel but help like it's 2019 all over again. Kind of eerily scary how 19 and this year matched up with each other. We had a run rule in the semis and shutout, and then we we both won four to nothing in the finals in shutouts. I mean, I, I really don't know how you can script that any better, uh, but I'll take it. It's hard to lose when you don't give up a run. So, I, I, you know, we might still be playing, but we can't lose. So I, I'm just proud of the way we played defense and pitched. It was awesome. Three years ago, I watched a video of Alex Majors pitch here and win it for Hennis, and I said, I want to do that and get that last strikeout, and I did that, and it feels amazing. I'm so excited, so happy. Just happy for my team, happy for myself, everybody. It's awesome. That is great stuff right there. So back in 2019, DeHennis won both the baseball and softball title, just like they did this year. This marks the third baseball state title in program history. All right, checking out this next game is the 2A state championship game. Shiner trying to complete an undefeated season, taking on Valley Mills. The Comanches get on the board first in the bottom of the second. Carson Schuett grounds out to the second baseman, but it's enough to get a runner home, that being Bryce Phillip. Shiner leads 1-0. Eagles answer in the top of the third. 
third game tied at 1-1 when Valley Mills drills one into deep. The gap in right center. Two runs come in to score, capping off a three-run inning, and it's 3-1 Valley Mills. They lead 4-1 heading into the bottom of the fifth. Shiner loads the bases, but Valley Mills pitcher Kenneth McLean gets a huge strikeout. You see that right there to end the threat. And Shiner unfortunately falls short of the state title, losing 4-2. All right, out here at Reagan High School. Check this out. The Reagan Rattlers baseball team got a sweet send off as they head up the road for state. Fight 98 is their motto this season. That's the 98 mile trip to Dell Diamond in Round Rock, where the Rattlers will face Rockwall Heath in the state tournament. That game is tonight, and this is what the Rattlers have been working for all season. This moment right here is surreal. Everyone here uh, setting us off to Round Rock is awesome. Uh, we, we just have that fight factor, we like to say. We, we really don't care who we're playing. We're going to play with the same emotions, the same intensity, like a dogfight. So we're going to war, and it's always a war, and we play like it always is. All right, they are ready to go here. Reagan and Rockwell Heath will play ball tonight at 7 at the Dell Diamond. So make sure that they stay cool and go Rattlers. And just want to remind you guys again, game four, the NBA Finals tonight on Case at 12. Golden State looking to even up the series against Boston tonight. Tip off at 8 p.m. Go Celtics. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Waiting, Fred. Waiting, Fred. <laughs> well, if you want to stay away from some heat, you have to stay indoors, and I think that's where we find Fiona inside in the cool temperature. What are you guys up to? Whose hand is that? Oh, yes, world famous comedian Tommy Davidson is here, and you're in for a lot of laughs this weekend at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club. And you've been to San Antonio. I what's have. Your, what's I your have. favorite? Well, thing it's about a secret it? it's possums and musicians will get into it. I mean, magicians will get into it later. <laughs> And magician Scott Pepper is here from the Magician's Agency with a preview of the show this weekend, and he's showing us the ropes. Yes, I'm going to show you the difference between reality and magic. See, reality is here me making a loop on the rope. Uh, magic with me pulling that loop right off the rope like that. I know, kind of crazy, right? And then, but we know that was just a piece of rope. So if I place it back on here and blow for me, perfect. <laughs> oh, all that and more when SB Life continues in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining us on the News at Noon. Take care. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. I'm Tommy Davidson. You're watching SA Live. <laughs> yes, hello and happy Friday. Look who's with me right here. Yes, I'm Fiona Gorski's and of course, you know, I've got amazing world-class actor and comedian Tommy Davidson with me and you know we've got summer tunes we're talking summer concerts today mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know so our question of the day what song would describe your life right now um, probably a uh, Saturday in the park thing it was the 4th of July but it's not Saturday it's not 4th of July but that would do it that would do it <laughs> mine would just be the circus theme song just on replay, just non -stop. Yep. Yep. That pretty much sums okay. it up okay. with a three-year-old okay. at home that's like a little tiny terrorist. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I know what that's like, too. I got a one-year-old. <laughs> one yeah, welcome to the circus. <laughs> yes, right. Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> welcome to the jungle. <laughs> so let us know what song describes your life right now at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. And you might see your answer a little later in the show. All right, well, of course, if you're looking for a laugh this weekend, guess what? Tommy Davidson, of course, performing at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club. Okay, but he's here at Market Square before you take yes, the stage yes, there. And always good to have you back. Always fun to have you on the mm -hmm. show. And I have a picture of the two of us from, uh, I think we have it, right? And this was taken. Not the 90s, right? This was taken. You know what? I don't think the year matters. We, oh, okay, okay. We look good, okay. right? This is a while back. I don't need to we I look like I'm about that, talk about the year. I look like I'm about that. <laughs> look like I'm about that. Hold up a liquor store. <laughs> You look like you went to Catholic school. Just you know. <laughs> I was dared to wear that vest and tie at work that day when I uh -huh. when I was doing weather up there because this was taken up in Dallas when 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 I was up there right, and so right. yeah that was a dare <laughs> that I lost. I think I just came from the bus stop or something. <laughs> but that was a, that was good times. Okay, so of course. How does it feel to be back in Texas? Because you've got Texas ties, right? Oh, yeah, i got Texas ties. I have a, a home in Houston. Um, I, I do love the Texases <laughs> because you don't really got to go anywhere else in the world or in the country. You know what I mean? Right. Everything's there. 
Okay, when people come to Texas, they expect everybody to be in a pickup truck and, and see cows and all this. No, no, no. You're gonna see Filipinos. You're gonna see Mexican. You're gonna see Asian. You're gonna see Indian. You're gonna see everything. Everybody. Yes. Everything. It's the only place you can get good Mexican food and then run over there and get good Thai food. Run over there and get good Caribbean food. All in 20 steps. All, all in 20 steps. <laughs> okay, and what and you barbecue love? as and soon barbecue. as you, yeah, you can just dive out the window and just like. Oh. <laughs> okay, so you've been touring, of course, with some of your Living Colors uh, co-stars uh -huh. and. You know, of course, there's a reboot of The Proud Family. So does that mean there might be a reboot of In Living Color? You know what? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, I too. hope so. We got to ask Keenan that because Keenan okay. is like the Professor Xavier of us, you mm -hmm. know. So once he decides, because he's like the lord of comedy, mm -hmm. so once he goes, you know, Jim and Jamie and all of you guys, I need you guys to get together and come and do In Living Color. <laughs> And then That'll we have to widen it. the door, and then Jennifer Lopez to come in there. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Yes, we all can dream. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so at, like you just did, folks love impressions. So, can you do say Sylvester Stallone as a ballet instructor? That's so easy. Okay. All right. You know, the first thing I want you guys to do is puree. All right. Now, puree is, 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 is sort of a move, and you kind of do this thing here, but you don't got to do it the whole way because every time I do it, it kind of hurts. So watch this. Hey, yeah, you see. So don't do that. But just try to puree. Now, puree! All right. <laughs> yes! Yes! Okay. All right, we got one more here. These are um, our SA Live sports highlights. Okay, and okay. Can you comment as Sammy Davis Jr. commenting over these sports highlights? Sure, I could. Okay? Sure, I could. Let's this, see if I could uh, this first one is uh, me riding a bull. Okay. First time with an experience, twice. Okay, so stupid. that happened fast. Mm -hmm. It sure okay. did. Mutual decision. And, and this is easy now. I, I, I only got one eye, so I can only see this, but it's in slow motion. <laughs> And I see this bounce, bounce, bounce to it, baby, bounce to it. And then I see you're down. And, 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 but I love the hockey helmet. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, this next clip, okay, <laughs> is my fabulous co-host, Mike, uh, showing off uh, his skills from back in the day on a, uh, on a football field. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm, there he goes. Okay. He thinks he's going to do it. Uh, he, oh, he, he wanna, really, he's wanna, very confident. Yeah, I want to do this as a bomber, man. All right. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Well, you see, he's going to chase this thing, and, and he's going to catch it. And then eventually he's going to chase it and, and not catch it. Now, now it looks like he's going to catch it, but it doesn't look like he is. And now again, he, he's not going to catch it. <laughs> yes. yes! All right, we got one last one here, okay. and this is, of course, my fabulous co-host, Mike, uh, on his uh, first attempt to, well, there. Okay. It speaks for itself right there, yeah. Okay, let me try this, okay. Uh, hold on, I, I want to really examine that. I got to take out my high. I didn't see anything. <laughs> yes, okay, of course. Now, what can folks expect at the show this weekend at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club? Oh, expect, expect love, ex expect laughs. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have been through a little bit. Yeah. I'm here to the rescue. The country loves you guys. We all support you guys. Okay, I got Eric Blake with me. We bring the party every time. LOL means laugh. You need it, we'll give it. Because folks can help give back, right? Because it's helping yes, out the can. victims of you value, too, yes, right? Yes, we can, yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you can catch Tom, Tommy Davidson at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club starting at 7.30 p.m. He has a bunch of shows through Sunday, June 12th. Here. A portion of the proceeds will go towards the Rob Elementary Victims Fund. For a link, go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right. Well, of course, if you're looking for another fun show to keep you inside and out of the heat this weekend, the Magicians Agency Theater is featuring another world-class performer who can amaze and entertain. Magician Scott Pepper is here to show us a preview of the show this weekend. Did you know that you're going to be a part of this? I did not. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Great. Scott, now I'm going to make got? a comedian laugh. No <laughs> pressure whatsoever. Thanks, Tommy. Uh, <laughs> All right. Let's do. Uh, let's do something quick here. Okay. Um, Fiona, just okay. take one out. Doesn't matter which one. Just Doesn't nice and quick. Which one. Okay. Have a look. Do I, do I, I look at it? Do they look at it? Too? Uh, you look at it for oh. the minute. And okay. um, I wasn't. Well, I didn't have one ready for Tommy. So we'll. Uh, we'll okay. 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 We'll do. Uh, yeah. We'll do one with you here, Tommy. Okay. So um, I'll just go through the deck, and you just shout stop. Stop. Okay. Have a look at that. Got I'm going to show the camera okay. this time. I'm not going to look. Okay. okay. And uh, Fiona, you remember yes. your card? Yes. Would you put it back into the back? Anyway, you like? Uh, Tommy, I'm just going to put my wallet up there for the minute. Okay. Okay. All right. Pressure. We've got one yes. here and one here. You okay. guys are both thinking of your playing cards, correct? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've got my wallet here. It's my lucky wallet. Inside here, I have some predictions. And hopefully, this is going to mean something to both of you. Okay. okay. Inside here, I have one card right here. Fiona, would that be incredible if that was your card? Yes. <laughs> Tommy, would that be incredible if that was your card? Yeah. Let me show you first. Fiona, is that your card? <laughs> Is it? It is, right, Tommy? Is that your card? Yes. It is! See, two cards 
Inter and if you're watching at home, that's also your card as well. So uh, that counts, right? Yes. No, 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 no. See? Please don't clap that. That's not terrible. The only okay. Comedian here. <laughs> All right, no, no, no. Like I said, it's my lucky wallet. I have two okay. cards in here. Tommy, your one is right here in the pocket. Now, when I made this prediction, have a look. There it is. When I made this prediction, I didn't know you were going to be here, so it was very fuzzy. I only saw right. half of the prediction, oh, okay. which is really weird. So I only saw half of your cards. So if you say pick the ten of diamonds. I picked the five of diamonds. If you pick the four of hearts, I saw the two of hearts, and that's what my prediction is. So for the first time, Tommy, what was the card you saw? Uh, seven of clubs. No, no, seriously, what was it? I think it was seven of clubs, wasn't it? Seven. Half of seven is three mm -hmm. and a half? Mm -hmm. Cool, okay, Fiona, let's do yours instead. Uh, no, really, it was really the seven of clubs? Half of seven of clubs would be the three and a half of oh clubs. There it is, God. three and a half clubs. All right, that brings us to one more, Fiona. Inside here, I have one final card. This is the No one. way. Uh, right, so you had a free choice of energy. You put it back in the pack. For the first time, what was the card you picked? Three of clubs. Not only did I pick the three of clubs, I also changed it into the ace of spades. <laughs> no? All right, Teddy, actually, Teddy, can you come close? Oh, Do you what? know, it's weird that I've got the Ace of Spades. The Ace of Spades is one of the only cards in the deck with writing on it. Can you come right in here? Can you see what it said under the spade here? I it says, know oh, you, you chose the three of clubs. Stop it! Oh my god! <laughs> So tell folks all about the show this weekend. Yeah, so normally, as you've seen, like most of the weeks, I've been bringing other acts on here. This week, it's going to be my show. So uh, tonight, you're going to see pictures come to life. You're going to see kind of mind reading. Uh, there's going to be some cool card tricks, some rope stuff like you saw at the beginning. A lot of fun for all ages. It's going to be a great time. And like I said, all our shows are family friendly at the Magician's Agency Theatre. So uh, you come see our show, then go straight to Tommy's show. You can see <laughs> two in one night. I love it. Hold on, my underwear are gone. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Pepper and Tommy Davidson, of course, thank you for stepping in. There's the information tonight and Saturday, 7 p.m. Sunday at 2. Get tickets online. Just head to our website for more information, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, still ahead on the show. The stars are heading to San Antonio all summer long. See some of the musical acts on the way and how you can have a fun-filled day of animals, rides, and rock stars for free. We're going to tell you about a ticket giveaway headed your way. But first, SA Live Summer Camp Week isn't over just yet, where, you're, where your little ones can bring out their inner artiste and make all the mess they want. It's next. Plus, our friends from the Animal Defense League let us know that they are nearly at capacity. If the animals they have don't get adopted, you know what? They can't save more lives. So today through Sunday, they are waiving all adoption fees with some sort of monetary donation to the ADL medical program. If you have room in your home and heart, go out and find a new furry friend and help save a life. More SA Live is on the way.